So this is the Olivetti Graphic Hub. It's a rather unique machine, and this one is QWERTY, which is kind of rare for these, and it's a proportionally spaced machine, meaning that wider characters like the M would take up more space on the page than narrower characters like the I. So the entire mask lifts off the top. We have four screws in the corners of the machine. And if we can see those right here, there's number one, number two, number three, and four. And that holds the machine onto the top of the body frame. Well, not the machine, the actual body shell. Yeah, I'm going to screw up a lot because I'm trying to finagle my camera and all of this extra stuff too. So this is the broken section of the frame. If I can get that on my camera. This is cast aluminum, so it does not like to bend and it does not like to weld. It's very difficult to weld aluminum, mainly due to the aluminum oxide, which melts at a much higher temperature than the aluminum itself. And that makes welding kind of difficult. And for something like this, especially with that big missing chunk right there, it's going to be really difficult. So my thinking is that since this entire area here is hollow, I can just fill that up with fresh melted aluminum, and that will both fill in all of the gaps and crevices, as well as reinforce the entire piece. Now in order to keep that chunk from falling out when you turn the machine over, I'm going to take a Dremel and cut a series of slots in the inside of these brackets here. And I'm going to bend those inwards and that's going to give me something for that extra aluminum that I pour in there to grab onto so it doesn't come out. There's also a crack on the other side of the frame here. I don't know if you can see that. Um, I'm going to try and address that later with some JB Weld. But for the most part, the big issue is the end of the frame right here. And as you can see, it's still a little bit bent and warped. Um, I took a hammer to this and I spent maybe about an hour trying to straighten everything out and get it all bent into, sh into shape. But it is not perfect. Um, but I'm thinking that it should just be enough. So hopefully I don't cut my finger off. Let's give this a shot. Alright, so there's the first of the two channels. I'm going to attempt to bend that inwards. It's going a little bit. It's kind of hard to hold this. Oh, and we got a crack, so that's about as far as I'm going to leave it. But I do want it in enough so that the aluminum will form around it and secure everything in place. But if I hammer it anymore, that part's actually going to break off, and I'll be back to ground zero. Alrighty, I've carved a second channel on the other side of the bend. And I'm going to just bend that one down a little bit, like I did with the other side. Oh boy, that's hot. You know what? I think the tab from above just fell out. Yep, so there you have it. That's the problem with working with cast aluminum. It's very brittle, and I'm surprised that it bent this much in shipping without actually cracking more than it did. So I'm just going to have to leave this as is for now and go ahead with the pour, and hopefully it doesn't just fall out of the bottom. I don't think it will because it's got a lot of little sharp corners to grab onto. Now the other thing that needs to happen is in order to correct all of the bends and warps, and make sure that everything on this body shell is nice and square. I need to clamp this in sort of an offset position. As you can see, it is both overlapped on the front side and rising above just a little bit. Alrighty, bright day out. So I have all of the metal inside the crucible ready to be melted. That is a scrap aluminum from old soda cans and fire extinguishers. Alright, the furnace is running and I am working on this mold. Now, I'm not really taping a whole lot because this is a very delicate process and I want to make sure that it's done carefully and done right the first time because there's really not a chance for a second pour here. Now ordinarily I would hate to be using a cardboard box, but that is all I have on hand and I know I just said I'd like to do it right, but with the amount of weight that is aluminum that'll be poured into here, I don't think it's going to be too much of an issue, so I just gotta be really careful that I don't accidentally bump anything. I have an extra bit of space here for the missing section so I have enough room to grind away. And I'm also carving out these extra channel sections that I cut into the frame before in hopes that the aluminum will flow in there and grab that section. Now this is delft clay so it shouldn't burn, it should hold the metal just fine. And I've used this for casting typewriter parts many times before so let's hope this works. Alright so this is pretty much the end of the mold here. And we're about ready to pour so I'm just going to check on the state of the metal now. Um, give it a quick stir and see if we're good to go on that. I might add a little bit of borax just to keep the uh, oxide levels down.
is a pretty serious leak and what I'd consider a catastrophic failure. Yeah, so if we take a brief look at the actual piece here, we can see that the metal found a nice channel underneath the end of the mold and dumped right out the bottom. So, yeah, I'm gonna have to, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to do this again. Shit. Now, of course, this is why I said I can't really do this more than once. Um, as you can see, the problem is now much worse. So we're going to attempt a final pour on this, and hopefully we can, can, we can still bridge that gap there. Um, it was a gap before, now it's a bigger gap, and we'll see what we can do. Alrighty, so this was more of a successful pour, and this should leave me plenty to grind off, and actually maybe too much. And I uh, used a smaller box and a lot more clay. So we're just gonna let this thing cool now. All right, here we have the final pour. It's gonna take a lot of work to make it look pretty. As you can see, we still have some warpage on the original part of the frame there, or body panel, I should say. Um, I'll have to use some Bondo or something on some of these areas to fill in the gaps, but the core structure is all aluminum so hopefully that should retain some rigidity and strength and everything else from here on out is just cosmetic work so this is where I'm at now with the repair and I purchased an angle grinder because I'm going to need to remove a lot more material off the bottom and I also purchased some Bondo so that's going to go in to fill a bunch of the cracks and divots that didn't quite get filled in during the pour but um other than that things look pretty square and uh it should come come together without any further problems. Well, I did the um Bondo on this after I ground on all of the aluminum from the casting and I just got it back from the paint shop today So let's look at that corner and I gotta say that it looks almost brand new and I know this video has been one mess of Everything, but I think the final product speaks to itself It is not absolutely perfect and you can see my cast blob of aluminum down there at the bottom but overall I think that that's about as best as it's ever gonna be. Even the crack on the other side here filled in very nicely. You can't even tell that that was there. And let me readjust. Yeah. I mean, things are a little bit bent. You can still tell that perhaps this machine had been damaged at some point. But other than that, I think from a distance, you really wouldn't be able to tell that that entire corner was missing at one point. So, very eager to get this uh, machine back together. And, uh, yeah, I think that came out very nice. I figured I might have some trouble getting the paint job to match, so I went ahead and I had all of the panels uh, painted the exact same color, but I do have to go in and touch up the color selector buttons there, which were not filled in. But at a distance, there's the repaired body panel of the Olivetti Graphica. And that corner does look pretty darn good. I mean, if you really look at it, you can tell that something happened there. You know, it's not 100% square, and I don't think it'll ever be 100% square. That'll just introduce more stress fractures and cracks into the metal itself. But yeah, that looks pretty darn good. 